Welcome to Movie Shortens. Follow us today to a 2022 American high school horror film called Student Body. Before we start, be aware, there are spoilers. Our movie begins at night on the school campus. It is dark and there seems to be nobody around. As day breaks and a new day begins, Jane is on her way to school. The corridors are busy. Other students put their things in their lockers and prepare for the day ahead. Her friends are walking through the corridor and Merritt comes to speak to Jane to gossip about another student and then criticizes her appearance. In class, they all receive their test results. Jane is the only one with an exceptional score. Merritt asks the teacher, Mrs. Anspach, when the retake will be. He sets a problem and only Jane is able to solve it. The rest of her classmates are stunned, but Mrs. Anspach says, that this proves no retake is required, and the rest of the class complains. He carries on with the lesson as planned. During recess, we see that security cameras are being installed. Jane is approached by Mr. Onspach, who congratulates her on her work. He tells her that she shouldn't feel ashamed of her talents. Merritt is watching, and later asks Jane if she fancies him. Jane denies it, and Merritt tells her to tell him to stop. She asks Jane to use her influence to get him to give the class a retake and tells her that her mother will be angry with her if she doesn't get into Princeton. Jane agrees to try. In gym class, the students are auditioning for the mascot job. Eric can't even do one pull-up and is mocked by the teacher, Mrs. Rakowski. Throughout the day, Jane insists that she really didn't do the reading or study, but all her friends are angry with her. A guy named Ellis wants to stop talking about it and instead suggests that they talk about raiding Mrs. Rakowski's whiskey stash on Friday night. Jane asks what about the new cameras. As they think about avoiding them, Jane says that they can be hacked. The students are reminded that some clubs are canceled this afternoon for the camera installation and also that the new security gate will be active within the next 20 minutes. Jane goes into Mrs. Onspach's classroom. She laughs at a mascot on the desk before he suddenly appears. She asks about the retake. He asks her how much she studied for the test. He suggests that she didn't study at all and thinks that she is scared of what her classmates think of her. He grabs at her bag and the stationery falls out. He checks her notebook and finds that she has just doodled inside and this proves his point. He tells her that it is pathetic that she hangs out with the others just to make them like her. He tells her that she has a gift and not to dare throw it away. She leaves the classroom in a panic and walks out of the school visibly shaken and upset. She makes a call to Merritt. The next day, Jane has been sleeping under a tree before she arrives at school. Speaking with Merritt, she asks if she thinks he'll do something about it. They speak to the principal and Jane tells him that Mr. Onspach got close to her and was angry. She says that he reached out to her and shook her. The principal tries to excuse the behavior and Merritt steps in to support her friend by threatening to tell the governors. Mr. Onspach is dismissed from the school. During the girls' football match, there is an advert for some toughened glass, which the mascot, Anvil Al, tries to break. It survives the hammer, and Eric mocks Brody, the guy in the mascot outfit. Jane is still worried that something else might happen, but Merritt assures her that everything will be okay. As the game ends, Jane becomes paranoid that the guy in the mascot costume is Mr. Onspach, but he removes the head to reveal it is Brody. He then has an argument with Nadia, who he pushes to the ground. Eric rushes forward to help, but is punched in the face. That night, the friends break into the school building. They go into Mrs. Rakowski's office and search for her whiskey, while Jane goes to the security office to hack the camera system. As she looks under the desk, she doesn't notice a shadowy figure in the corridors. She switches off the cameras. Eric finds Rakowski's diary and reads it, discovering that she really hates them. Suddenly, Nadia scares them all by turning the lights off. The lights go back on as Ellis manages to open the locker and finds a bottle of whiskey and plastic cups. They are accompanied by a note that says, One for me, one for you, love Brody, implying that Brody bribed Rakowski for the mascot position. Jane joins them and they all play beer pong, get drunk, and dance. The drunken conversation comes round to them talking about the lowest price they would pay to kill someone. Merritt hates her mother 
and says 20 grand. Ellis says the president, as no one should be able to tell other people how to live. Jane thinks that there is always a peaceful solution, but Nadia tells her that surely she would kill someone if they did enough to hurt her. Jane says that she would not, as she would hate to feel the guilt. Nadia asks what she has to feel guilty about and thinks that she is harboring a secret. Some of them go for a swim and Jane asks Merritt why she didn't stop Nadia from interrogating her. Merritt says that she already solved one problem for her and Jane tells her that she sounds like her mother. Merritt tells Ellis that Onspot assaulted Jane and they had him fired, which is why they have had a substitute teacher all week. She suggests that Jane won't want to get with him for a long time because of that. He accuses her of being a terrible friend and she storms off. Nadia and Eric are getting friendly in the pool, but as she goes to kiss him, he throws up. He goes to the locker room to be sick again. While his head is down the toilet, someone approaches in the anvil, Al costume, and smashes him over the head. Later, Nadia goes to check on him and finds his body on the floor. She screams. Jane notices that her ankle bracelet is missing and wants to check in the pool. Merritt wants to leave now before she gets in trouble with her mother. Ellis tells Jane that Merritt told him what happened and he is sorry that it happened to her. Merritt goes to find Nadia and discovers her crying in the hall. The others join her and Ellis finds Eric's body. Ellis says that they should leave, but Nadia is hysterical and refuses to leave without Eric. Jane tries to set off a fire alarm, but... It doesn't work. They all try to leave, but the door is locked. Nadia is sure that this is all Brody's plan and tries to smash the window, but the toughened glass withstands her blows. There is no Wi-Fi and no signal, and the landlines are down, but Ellis suggests climbing out through the vents. He and Nadia get into an argument, which Merritt has to break up. Nadia decides to go and find Brody and mess him up, but Jane suggests that they just wait till morning for the janitors to arrive. She also tells him that she killed the cameras for 12 hours. Merritt says that if she finds an open door, then she is going straight home. They start to search for a way out. In the kitchen, Nadia sees a silhouette and goes to investigate, but it is only a coat stand. Ellis asks, what if it is Rakowski and not Brody? He remembers that Eric found her diary that said some weird stuff about them, but Nadia is sure that it's Brody. Jane checks her locker and finds a note that says, take note this time. She rejoins the others and they search the theater. Jane shows Merritt the note and tells her that she thinks it's on Spotch. Merritt says that she doesn't care and just wants to get out of there. The four friends walk through the corridor together when suddenly some music starts playing over the speaker system. Nadia calls out to Brody to stop being a psycho, but suddenly Anvil Al appears behind them all. Some security gates start to fall and they run to get on the other side of them. Nadia deliberately holds back and goes to confront Anvil Al. She accuses him of killing Eric and he swings the sledgehammer around and kills her. Merritt has twisted her ankle and Ellis and Jane have to help her walk. They go into a classroom and try to barricade themselves inside. As Jane and Merritt talk, Ellis starts to cry. Jane tries to take Merritt's mind off things by talking about a camping trip they went on. Merritt tells her to stop, so she walks away. She walks into a dark room and is joined by Ellis. There are photographs of them hanging there and behind them. Anvil Al approaches. As he reaches in for a kiss, Anvil Al hits him over the head and kills him. Anvil Al calls her name and she stabs him with the screwdriver. She runs back to Merritt and clears the barricade so that they can escape. They are pursued by Anvil Al. They get to the library where Merritt asks what happened to Ellis. Merritt tells her that this is all her fault for acting so helpless with Onspotch. She says that Jane loved it until he got too close. She had to save the day, even though she then seemed like the bad person. She accuses Jane of stealing Ellis, the only guy she ever liked, even though she protected and stood up for her. Her mom asks why Merritt can't be more like Jane. Merritt tells her that nothing about Jane is better than her. She is just small and pathetic. Jane pushes her and Merritt falls over the balcony and lands on a table below. Jane returns to the corridor and returns to Mr. Onspotch's room. He is sitting at the desk and she asks him what he wants. He tells her that he thought their last talk was enough, but 
she needed something more, so that's what he gave her. He asked how she felt when she pushed Merritt. Was she capable of doing that before? Her friends all held her back, and she outlasted all of them. And now, she is free of them because she is special. He goes to his desk and gets out a pencil that she dropped. He tells her that he will give it back to her if she thanks him for teaching her how to become a woman. She walks towards him and takes the pencil. She tells him that she has learned that she is not pathetic and attacks him with the pencil. She tries to take his keys and he wounds her in the leg with the pencil. She stumbles away and reaches the front door. She tries the keys and finally finds the right one and escapes outside. Her phone gets a signal outside and she tries to make a call, but Onspots catches her and smashes her phone. She manages to escape again and he pursues her through the trees. She climbs up a tree and holds on to a branch. She can hear him coming and as he passes, she drops out of the tree and lands on top of him. She grabs a sledgehammer and kills him with it. The following day, Brody wakes in his car. In his mirror, he notices a blood-stained Jane walking down the street, dragging the sledgehammer. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.